Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good Saturday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 15th of February. As always, we encourage you to visit our website at weather.gov Alaska or arh.noaa.gov. The weather info line is open at 800-472-0391. You can find each Weather Service office on Twitter and also on NWS Alaska. Find us on Facebook under U.S. National Weather Service Alaska. And during the afternoon, as you know by now, you can get a daily afternoon briefing with the surface charts that you're about to see here about 345, 4 o'clock or so. Uh, if you do that by going to YouTube and then searching for NWS Anchorage, all one word, you'll get that map briefing. And then after this show, and uh, from our broadcast partner, alaskapublic.org, you can get the full Alaska weathercast. Uh, simply go to their website, or you can go to YouTube and search for AKWX TV, all one word again, uh, short for Alaska Weather TV, and you'll be able to find the complete broadcast there on YouTube. Watch it on your phone, your mobile device, or just right there on your computer if you're able to. Here's a look at what's going on across our state this afternoon and this evening. Winter weather advisories have been dropped. Uh, winter storm warnings have been dropped for southeastern Alaska and for Yakutat, even though it's still snowing in some areas there. But it has been starting to see a lot more rain work its way back up the coast there. So wind and rain and warmer weather trying to work its way back up through southeast. Now that cold and the snow focused on parts of the Copper River Basin. And in some cases, you may see as little as three inches of snow. And in many other cases, you might see six to nine, maybe as much as 13 inches of snow around the Glen Ellen area and South Ennie. So quite a variation in what's expected across the Copper River Basin area. Uh, but you are under a winter weather advisory, at least through the rest of this evening and into the early morning hours tomorrow. Looking northward, of course, it's still cold across the interior, but the winds and the cold combined. Uh, still creating that feels like index or that wind chill index down to maybe 50 or 55 below in some cases or worse. <laughs> yeah, if you were watching Facebook or Twitter earlier today, you saw that we announced uh, what is probably the coldest temperature on record as far as uh, weather records go and the weather sensors go out around, uh, I believe it was uh, Howard Pass up here in the north and western parts of the Brooks Range. That is about 70 miles north of Ambler and it got a little cold there. The winds were blowing. Uh, we had a gust this morning of 103 miles per hour, but yesterday afternoon it looked like the wind chill dropped to 97 below. And our apologies and uh, condolences there to the folks in Prudhoe Bay. Your weather sensor previously held the record. That was back from 1989. The wind chill dropped to 96 below at that point. So you may still kind of hold that record as far as a wind chill goes in a populated location. As far as we know, Howard Pass is not a populated location. Uh, but now the new record there as far as uh, Wind chills go is in Howard Pass. Nothing doing out there across the Aleutians. Gales and heavy freezing spray likely across the Bering Sea, but as far as on land, not much going on. Back to Howard Pass. A beautiful shot. Now here's a look at uh, the pictures and what it looks like, of course, in the summertime. You don't see any snow there. Uh, this is a uh, courtesy of Ken Hill from the National Park Service. We thank you very much, Ken, for sharing these pictures with us. Uh, once again, you can see the uh, automated weather station there. You've got the anemometer here that was really doing a lot of the work, I guess, yesterday and again today. Look at all the rocks sitting across the tripod here, just holding down the sensor encased here uh, in kind of a, a briefcase or sensor enclosure. And a lot of these little boulders sitting right on top of the tripod. A beautiful shot looking out at the sensor there across uh, some very open terrain and obviously some very windy terrain. Now here's what the weather record looked like from yesterday. This is courtesy of uh, Brian Brett Schneider, uh, one of the uh, climatologists here in the Anchorage area. You can see the air temperature holding between 30 and about 40 below. 
Then it goes to about 42 below uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, you can see the wind speed picking up, picking up, takes a little dip, and then whoa, up to 71 miles per hour. Had a gust at 78 miles per hour around 339, and that is when the wind chill dropped to 97 below. So you don't see that every day. The lowest wind chill record now set at 97 below for Howard Pass, Alaska. Uninhabited, so Prudhoe Bay, if you want to put a little asterisk by your, your weather record there is, yeah, but this one happened where people live. Okay, you can still have it. Let's look back at uh, the Bering Sea, and you'll notice that we've got a pretty deep south and westerly flow coming into the western parts of the Bering Sea. The frontal boundary today is stretching out a little bit farther here. This is actually yesterday's series of images because the new ones weren't coming in, unfortunately. Uh, but this front is trying to fall apart. It's got some uh, colluding air coming in behind it. Back behind that, a northerly flow coming down the west coast of Alaska, part of that cold air. You know, it's getting to that time of season, almost, that we can almost squeeze in some visible satellite imagery, and that always tells the tale a lot better for me, and I hope for you. So we're going to show this just to kind of uh, give us a little uh, tease or wet our palate a little bit about uh, the summer to come. The visible satellite picture shows a really strong uh, boundary here. This is that frontal boundary working up towards southeast. We've got a number of circulations, low pressure centers here just across the Gulf. A lot of drier air coming in and uh, you can see all the cold air working across the ice. In fact, if we put this in motion again, watch for the parts that don't move. That's the ice edge, which we can show again. Uh, out across the Aleutians, a lot of uh, drier air working through. And if you were to watch this, a little, especially in high resolution right over the Alaska Peninsula, you could see the wave clouds working off the Alaska Peninsula. Pretty interesting stuff there. Visible picture, just a, a wonderful thing to behold and uh, keep your eyes on. You could stare at this for days, I think. And you can see kind of the gap flow working across the Alaska Peninsula there. Snow focusing on uh, the Copper River Basin today. We had some scattered snow showers across parts of the interior and some occasional precipitation across southeast. Places like Yakutat, I think, were one of the wettest spots with about seven tenths of an inch. Here's our situation across South Central now. It really hasn't changed much from yesterday, which didn't change much from the day before or really the day before that. A 968 millibar low there sitting across extreme southeastern parts of Alaska, uh, at least the mainland southeastern sections looking at that frontal boundary just offshore. And then here comes that wraparound flow all the way from the continent uh, into western Canada, into the interior, and then into the west coast, and then back around again. And by the time it gets out to the west, it's really dry and really cold and pretty windy up across the northwestern parts of the Brooks Range. Here's the frontal boundary. We were looking at that occlusion, and it's going to eventually just drop south as a cold front and then probably fall apart. Low pressure sitting across the southern Gulf working toward the Pacific Northwest, bringing in a little bit better chance for rain mixing with snow. Probably going to see this extend a little bit farther up than how I painted it earlier this afternoon. And then some snow showers across southeast. Of course, some of that uh, could make it into uh, the Copper River Basin tonight as anywhere from 3 to 13 inches of snow. Snow and wind for parts of the Brooks Range summits there. Uh, you're still looking at mainly a wind and temperature issue. So wind chill advisory is posted there with a scattering of very light snow across the interior. Some parts of south central, though, uh, so could certainly be looking at a little bit more than that, including Anchorage, anywhere from about one to two inches of snow. Sunday, more of the same, a 980 millibar low there sitting close to the Kodiak Island region and the southern tip of the Kenai. Low pressures south of Haida Gwaii, and we have an opportunity for rain and snow in southeast. Snow showers and uh, the southern parts of uh, south central and again some snow across the Brooks Range combined with wind and scattered snow showers across the Aleutians. Let's do it again for Monday. Why not? Low pressure sitting just offshore of Yakutat at 993 millibars. Again, rain and snow opportunities here. Low pressure working across the Gulf. We've recycled our frontal boundary once again, so we've formed a new front working across the Gulf. Several waves of low pressure working from east to west on the northern side of this low pressure system. Snow showers in the north. Uh, clouds will break up from time to time, partly to mostly cloudy at times. Wind mainly north of the Yukon there really starts to pick up again, so wind chill advisories probably across the uh, north and northwestern interior. And then more of a northerly flow coming down the west coast. Scattered snow showers for the Alaska Peninsula. And wait a minute, oh, here's something new, rain trying to work its way up into the western parts of the Aleutians. Maybe that uh, overall uh, ridge is breaking down there and will let another wave try to work its way into the western bearing. Chances are, though, it's going to fall apart. This is some pretty rough, tough, hard to bluff cold that's stacked all the way into the upper atmosphere, as you'll see here in just a few minutes. All right, here's what happened today. Mid-40s across southeast, 34 around Haines and Skagway, 35 in Yakutat, mid-40s there for Juneau. Around Prince William Sound, we saw teens and 20s, 19 in Anchorage today, 26 around Homer and Seward. As you travel northward up the um, Parks Highway, 10 below around Denali, 5 above, though, in Fairbanks, a milder day for you, 4 in Fort Greeley. 
Uh, temps around Northway and Eagle were sub-zero, as you would expect. Port Yukon, 8 below. 8 below as well for Arctic Village. The Arctic Coast, anywhere from 15 to 31 below there in Prudhoe Bay. Dead Horse, Kaktovik had you beat, though, at 36 below. Kotzebue Sound, anywhere from 5 below to 19 below. 2 below in Shishmaref, 3 above in Nome, a little bit colder than that in Unicleet today. McGrath was showing 1 below. Galena, about the same. Ambler, about 8 below. Bettles was about 4 below. Uh, Bethel showing 1 below. Nunavak Island, around 3 today. Southwestern areas around Bristol Bay uh, with ice now in Bristol Bay. 3 to 6 degrees there from King Salmon to Dillingham. And 6 to 19 degrees there in the northern sections of the Alaska Peninsula out towards Sand Point. Cold Bay and Falls Pass lower 20s for you. 25 in Dutch Harbor in Alaska and 30s for the central and western parts of the chain with Kodiak Island in the teens and 20s. 15 overnight there. South central uh, single digits and low teens. 20s and 30s for southeast. The interior looking at temps around Fairbanks and the Tanelnaw Valley. Probably 10 to 15 below. The northern interior until the Brooks Range, you're still looking at most areas anywhere from 10 to 20 below. From Anaktuvik Pass northward, probably temps between 20 and 35 below, maybe even colder in some places like Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse. Around Seward Peninsula, 15 to 30 below. Southwest in the YK Delta, 5 to 15 below. Bristol Bay, about 10 below in some cases. And the Alaska Peninsula to the Aleutians, anywhere from uh, 15 to about 30 above. With high temperatures, they're not changing much from where you begin in the morning. The YK Delta will make it into the single digits. Uniclete, about 1 below, 2 above in Nome. The interior, uh, hovering close to zero around the Tanana Valley into the Brooks Range, 15 to 30 below. South Central in the low to mid 20s with Kodiak around 23 and 30s and 40s for parts of Southeast Juneau closer to 34. Flying weather will be tough in the north, mainly due to turbulence, but as far as visibility goes, look for some of that to improve. IFR conditions running through the Bering Strait and off the Chukchi Sea Coast. MBFR expected across a wide swath of the Bering Strait. In the Bering Sea for the Gulf, MVFR conditions there and running over the northern and eastern parts of the Gulf. A large part of uh, southeast will be seeing uh, improving visibility, though. Uh, watch out for some of the gap winds. Here's a look at pass conditions now. As you would expect, Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass may be a little tough to fly through tomorrow, but the visibility uh, hovering around MVFR conditions there. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass should have good visibility throughout your Sunday. Same goes for Rainy Pass. Windy Pass, we expect to see MVFR by the end of the day. Isabel Pass, likely VFR as well. Mentasta Pass should remain visual. And Sanita Pass, expects to turn over to MVFR throughout the day. Porter's Pass, we're going to hold on to MVFR, especially on the eastern side of the pass. Chilkoot and White Pass, looks like IFR trending toward MVFR throughout the rest of your Sunday. Freezing levels, well, it's no doubt the surface freezing line is way south of the Alaska Peninsula and even some parts of the central Aleutians. You can see it's also hovering just offshore of southeast, and our elevated freezing lines pushed all the way down to the Pacific Northwest. Really no hope of seeing any substantial warming. There is some icing potential, and many of you flying yesterday and today were reporting at least some light rime uh, in southeast and south central and some scattered reports in the north. Most of that seemed to be below four and 7,000 feet. And for southeast, there's a chance for some light icing, mainly below 10,000, but above 2,000 feet as you head out toward Haida Gwaii and the Dixon entrance. Like I said, our low pressure system is stacked and packed from the upper parts of the atmosphere and the jet stream all the way down to the surface. So we've got a lot of support to keep this pretty much right in place. A decent northerly flow coming across the Bering Sea, across the central and western Aleutians between 80 and 130 knots, and then a pretty deep southwesterly flow coming into the Pacific Northwest and southern parts of southeast. And reinforcing cold here across the Arctic, uh, that's also sending a lot of cold air into the Bering Strait. Our nearest weather changer, probably out there across the southern tip of the Kamchatka Peninsula, a little bit of a ridge here, but that's also dragging in colder air from areas well north of Russia. So, well, it's pretty much going to stay put for a little while. Low pressure across the YK Delta and southwest at 9,000 feet, grabbing into some fast moving air anywhere from 30 to 60 knots coming across the Chukchi Sea coast and our uh, cyclonic curvature here bringing in that drier air back into south central, combining it with a little bit of moisture here for the north and eastern Gulf Coast, 30 knots coming into southeast and more of an east to westerly flow across the Brooks Range between 50 and 60 knots. Very little change at 3,000 feet. You can see our low pressure system here uh, not too far away from Bethel. Northerlies coming out of the Bering Strait between 30 and 40 knots. A westerly flow crossing the Gulf. We've got another disturbance here around Haida Gwaii. This is uh, bringing in winds around 40 to 60 knots or so. Winds slow down coming over the Wrangell St. Elias and into the interior around 30 to 40 knots. Uh, this pattern again probably pretty much locked in place, but we will have another uh, set of disturbances probably moving off the Alaska Peninsula as that stronger wind start to generate a little bit of spin there. So watch for that as we head into the week. 
Turbulence potential, you betcha. As we saw today, those gusts around Howard Pass made it up over 100 uh, miles per hour. So pretty strong winds growing through there. If you are flying below 6,000 feet, the visibility may be fine, but chances are you're going to run into some chop. Uh, light to isolated moderate, pretty widespread across the north and the Chukchi Sea Coast, even the western tip of the Seward Peninsula. Watch out for some gap wind flow here and low-level wind shear across the region below 4,000 feet for the central illusions and parts of southeast will see some hit and miss chop mainly below 6,000 feet. We've added a layer of uh, turbulence here mainly along a dying frontal boundary. And of course here's the sea ice edge. This will lead us into our marine weather discussion here in just a few minutes. The ice edge now south of Nunavak Island and St. Matthew. Will it reach the Pribilofs? We'll uh, talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. And of course, you can get the latest at weather.gov slash Anchorage. Uh, just click on Ice Desk on the left-hand side of your screen. More in your marine weather forecast here in just a few minutes. Stay with us. We've just driven through 10 months of winter. The daylight's coming back, it's warming up, everybody's got a little bit of cabin fever. And what do we throw in front of them? 18 hours of daylight, a pair of skis, and some fun activities. Nana Nordic is the story of what happens when cross-country skiers from all over, Olympians, World Cup racers, university and high school coaches, share their sport with remote Alaska. In 2011, I finished my season and I had two days to pack up for the trip. And to be honest, I didn't know what I was really getting myself into. After the ski program left last year, the kids wanted to continue skiing and they missed not having that activity. 300 pairs of boots, poles, and skis were sent to the far north, above the Arctic Circle, to Kotzebue and the 10 surrounding villages. Located in northwest Alaska, the Inupak have lived in what is called the Nana region for more than 10,000 years. Transportation is by snow machine and airplane. Nordic skiing has not been a part of this northern culture, but that is changing. Despite their remoteness, the Nana region villages are busy with the activity of daily life. And for children, school. Good morning, Katsu School. The temperature outside today is 14 below zero. Today, Nana Nordic will be visiting all the gym classes. Now, on to your morning announcements. The month of April, with 18 hours of sunlight, is perfect for cross-country skiing. Volunteer coaches taught the students a new way to enjoy the world, just outside their door. The volunteers come from all sorts of backgrounds. We have recreational skiers, we have competitive skiers, and we also have Olympians. Good afternoon. We just flew in from Anchorage, and we're here with... It's really awesome to see them take up something new that may be challenging at first and just to succeed at it and they have a lot of fun together and it's something that's so positive and it's really healthy for them. Our kids are really active and they enjoy being active. They would much rather do that than sit at home playing video games if there's somebody offering it. Skiing feels kind of like swimming because you could feel the smooth air going across your face. The students spent five days learning to ski, during school and after school. The emphasis was on fun and exploring the land.
The kids respond really well to skiing. I mean, a lot of them are maybe a little, a little timid, a little afraid at the start. They learn that they're capable of doing these things that they, that they didn't think they were capable of doing before. You go right, left, right, left, and you can go as fast as you can, as slow as you can, and you could take your time. We would like to have skiing as a school activity. It would be great to have a ski club up here, and we love to ski, and hopefully the communities enjoy skiing as well. 40 coaches, 1,500 students, 100 adults, 440 hours of coaching. Nana Nordic's goal is simple. Introduce students and communities to cross-country skiing, a fitting sport for the place they call home and the world beyond. Nothing better than smiling kids on a weekend there, and maybe some future Olympians from Alaska, too. That's cool stuff. Here's a look at Sunday in southeast, and winds coming in from the south and east through the inner channels, running around 20 knots or so, and 4 to 5 knots. For most areas, there may be up to 7 knots as you get out toward the Dixon entrance, and along coastal areas, a south and southeasterly wind picking up a little bit to 30 knots there, offshore of Sitka and Craig. 13-foot seas are expected there on Sunday, and then a little bit of a shift there as that uh, frontal boundary moves in just a little bit more closer to shore. A south and southwesterly flow comes in 11 to 13 foot seas offshore south and southeasterly winds continue up north Ren Yakutat that's 20 knots there around uh, uh, Cape Fairweather and northerly winds develop out of the Lynn Canal that may start as early as tomorrow afternoon actually uh, certainly by Monday and southeasterly is coming in through uh, the Stevens Passage region Frederick Sound and the southern inner channels uh, 25 knots with a five foot sea for south central now uh, southeasterly flow still working in low pressure sitting right about here so we've got onshore flow coming into the Kenai Peninsula around Seward Prince William Sound 15 to 25 knots three foot seas on the inside 10 foot seas on the outside and then we have the westerlies coming into the back side of low pressure right about here and that's going to uh, probably create some uh, low level wind shear here around Kodiak Island at times but probably not too bad 15 to 20 knots four foot seas around Shelikoff Strait 15 knots coming through the Barren Islands and into uh, Cook Inlet there with two foot seas. Northerlies become uh, variable throughout the rest of the day, it looks like, by Sunday afternoon. And you'll probably see more of that on Monday. Very light winds coming down the Cook Inlet over the ice, two to three foot seas there. Westerlies over the Barren Islands and then uh, westerlies continue east of Kodiak Island. Now we've got northeasterlies coming down the eastern side of the Kenai Peninsula and western Prince William Sound. Low pressure sitting right about here. So now we're changing the wind direction a little bit across the north and western parts of the Gulf by Monday. Northwesterlies coming across the Alaska Peninsula between 20 and 25 knots. Uh, expect uh, 12 foot seas there north of Cold Bay, 9 to 11 foot seas on the Pacific side. Still could be some higher gusts. They shouldn't be as bad as they've been for the last couple days though. Northeasterlies over the ice inside Bristol Bay at 20 knots on Monday. Northwesterlies coming across the Alaska Peninsula and winds still about the same speed but shifting to more of a southwesterly direction again as that low pressure system is kind of backing into the western Gulf a little bit. Here's a look at the Aleutians on Sunday. The wind's really not too bad, 30 to 35 knots or so. More of a northwesterly flow coming across the central and eastern Aleutians. 25 knots south of Nikolsky in Alaska. Northerlies through Kiska and Attu. Anywhere from 14 to 15 knot winds expected there by Sunday. A little bit of a shift out here in the west. Northerlies continue over Kiska. 
You can see a small shift there south of Atka and Adak. Northeasterly is at 25 knots. The winds are picking up here to gales uh, north of the Aleutians there, 35 to 40 knots or so, and up to 40 knots there south of Nikolsky and out toward Unalaska, only 35 knots with 13 foot seas, 18 foot seas though in the Pacific. Northerlies continue over the ice across the west coast now, northwesterlies out of uh, Kuskokwim Bay and over the Pribilovs, freezing spray of course south of the ice edge. So watch for that 40 knots there around the St. Matthew Island waters with a six foot sea. That diminishes somewhat on Monday. Northerlies out of Kuskokwim Bay and around the Pribilovs looking at 14 foot seas there closer to the Pribs with freezing spray still an issue there in the open water areas. And across the Arctic coast, an east and northeasterly flow in the Beaufort Sea Coast. Northeasterly is running down the Chukchi Sea. 40 knot winds will be some of the strongest we see around Cape Lisbon from the north and east. Northerly is out of Kotzebue Sound. And the winds diminish across the Chukchi Sea Coast for Monday. Northeasterly is pretty much rule the roost from uh, east to west. Uh, we'll continue with northerly flow out around the Kotzebue Sound region at 30 knots. So watch for uh, blowing snow there and, of course, some pretty nasty wind chills. Tonight's forecast includes more snow for the Copper River Basin. Some areas around Glen Allen could see as little as 3 inches and the surrounding terrain could see as high as 13 inches there. So uh, winter weather advisories posted for you. All the advisories have been dropped for southeast right now and it looks like some areas around south central may continue with an opportunity for scattered snow showers as much as 1 to 2 inches perhaps around Anchorage. Uh, winds will be the main issue across the north as especially north and west of Fairbanks and into places like Ambler in the Brooks Range and the Arctic Coast. Wind chill values could be as cold as 50 to 55 below, so be extra careful if you have to venture outside. Light accumulations of snow mainly across the Arctic Coast and the Brooks Range as we go through the rest of the weekend. Winds across the west will keep things pretty chilly. Scattered snow showers for Bristol Bay and the Aleutians with low pressure hovering in the Gulf and periods of rain and snow may mix for parts of southeast with another wave of low pressure centering up on the Gulf as we head into Monday. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.